There was an article in the journal Nature about the politics of climate change. The article found when we identify with a particular group, climate action is identified by identification with that group. We make decisions based on our identification with the in-group and perceived threats from the out-group. So liberals or Democrats will listen to other liberals and respond to perceived threats from conservatives or Republicans, whereas conservatives are listening to other conservatives and responding to perceived threats from liberals or Democrats. Yet, when partisanship is low, climate policy support is similar for Republicans and Democrats. It was on January 1st, 1970, that Richard Nixon, a Republican, signed into law the National Environmental Policy Act, which has often been called the Magna Carta of federal environmental laws. It would seem that we, when we identify with a particular person or ideology, we are distracted away from God's wisdom, and we start focusing on each other for answers instead. This seems to be the situation in Corinth when Paul is speaking to his congregation. His solution, listen and refocus on God. The reading in Christ in Our Home for January 26th was in response to Micah 6, 1 through 8. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? The meditation for that day written by Jessica Davis says that before that verse, the reader is told to remember that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. Remembering is the foundation of Micah 6, 1 through 8, whereas doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly is a reaction. Davis says, rushing ahead to verse 8, steps on God's toes and threatens to make our behavior the focus, a subtle but real idolatry. Before we take action, in other words, it is necessary to remember God first, because God gives us the wisdom we need to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly. The Spirit of God works through us to do the work that must be done. In 1 Corinthians 3, 9, Paul says we are co-workers with God. When Paul says he and Apollos are servants, he uses the Greek word, which means deacons. In the New Testament, this term is used to describe the way that Jesus served as well. For example, Matthew 20, 28 says, Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, the language Jesus uses for serve is a form of the Greek word for deacon. It is a term translated as minister or servant in English. And when it is used in the New Testament, it refers to people who are doing God's work. This terminology is used before an actual office of deacon even existed. Therefore, at this time in history, everyone was welcome in ministry. It appears very much as a priesthood of all believers. Yet the service we do is in loyalty to God, not in loyalty to a human or a human cause. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3.21, let no one boast in men. For all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future. All are yours, and you are Christ's, and Christ's is God's. Martin Luther spoke of this in his Freedom of a Christian, where he says a Christian is, a, is Lord of all, completely free of everything, and a Christian is a servant, completely attentive to the needs of all. The Lordship Luther speaks of is through our faith in Christ, he uses the imagery of marriage and says we are united with Christ as spouses are united in marriage. While both Christ and the marriage partner maintain their individual identity, we share everything, just as spouses share money, home, car, etc. Yet in this spiritual marriage, 
Christ shares our sin and death and destroys it. And we share Christ's righteousness and life. Because of that, we are inferior to none. Yet there is still a part of us, even after being united with Christ, that desires the things of this world. That is the part that must be kept in check. While our soul is fully saved by God through our faith and unification with Christ, there is still a part that gets distracted until full unification at death. Therefore, when we do God's work, we must remind ourselves to stay focused on God's work, not our own. We must always, always be careful about devoting ourselves to a human, whether it be political or social leader or a human-led cause. Our first stop must be listening to God because God's knowing is much better than our own. Paul makes a clear distinction between our wisdom and God's wisdom. In 1 Corinthians 3.19, he says, For the wisdom of this world is folly with God. Our work in the world must come from God rather than our ego. Otherwise, we may head in the wrong direction, even if we have the best of intentions. St. Andrew is on the precipice of welcoming a new interim pastor. A change such as that can be difficult. We are going to have to get used to a new way of doing things, of being in community. The pastor who was with us for 17 years did things a certain way, and we were used to that way. This new pastor will bring new ideas and a new way of practicing worship, and that may be very disconcerting for some of us. In my years of experience with St. Andrew, I am confident that we will rise to the occasion and be open to the new interim pastor. Yet it is always good to remind ourselves of what can happen if we do not stay connected with each other, listen to each other, and be conscious of the desire to silo with those who think like we do. It is healthy and valuable to listen to each other even if we disagree because God can speak wisdom through any one of us. If we become loyal to one person or one cause and we are not listening to God, then no matter how virtuous or necessary the cause is, we can end up shutting the door to God's wisdom and lose sight of what is an important part of any cause we take up. When we listen to God, the decisions we make will be filled with God's wisdom, whether it be working with a new pastor, making decisions about our community, or making decisions about our personal life or family. It is God's spirit working through us that will provide us the wisdom to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. Therefore, keep focused on God. He will guide us into deep connection and allow us to see what we may not have been able to see otherwise. In Jesus' name, amen.